Pass up the Jeep, it's good to be free. Load up the pans and fishing poles. The highway is long, the wheels turning round. Pack up the cook stove and the bowls. Arlo and I, we hit the open road. Arlo and I are on the road. Hey everybody, Arlo and I are out and about again here in northern Arizona and we decided we'd go for a little hike out in the hills here. Uh, it's about mid-January and the weather's really nice. Uh, it's probably mid-40s and it's getting a little windy, um, but uh, looks like we might uh, get a little weather. I don't know, maybe some snow? Either way, it's a perfect day for a little hike. Come on, R. What do you think? <laughs> Eating a little snow. We're hiking on a little uh, game trail here. Um, obviously, the elk and deer go through this way. Uh, makes it easier to go through this grass. Wow, look how pretty that is with the sun poking through. Uh, man, the lighting here is just amazing. Look at that. So beautiful and it reminds me of one of my favorite authors, um, Lauren Isley. Um, and in his book, uh, The Immense Journey, the final chapter is called The Secret of Life. And he talks about putting on his cap and his coat and heading out into the woods in the fall. And he felt he could find it in the brittle dead plants that had uh, died out for the winter. And it's Man. a book that I read quite often, and especially that particular chapter, The Secret of Life, I go back to over and over again, and it means a lot to me. That's uh, all Lauren Isley, um, The Immense Journey, and uh, the whole book is fantastic. It's absolutely probably one of my top three books of all time. Um, I will find a little cave down here. Interesting. Let's see what's down here. Look at that. Lauren Isley also was a great fossil hunter and uh, often uh, talked about that, but there was uh, another scene in the book where he uh, finds a small skull of, I believe, like a rodent um, in the wall of a uh, of a cliff, and the way he describes it, and uh, just another favorite part of mine in that book. And this scene right here reminds me so much of that. You can see this being the perfect little place for animals to get out of the weather. I mean, 
Look at the beauty in that live oak there. Yeah, pretty cool. This is a cool area of transition in between uh, the trees and the desert is uh, so often overlooked and so beautiful. Lauren Isley also talks about these all the seed pods this time of year hooking onto your clothes and taking a ride with you. And that's what's happening to me right now. <laughs> this grass, even though it's super beautiful, it definitely likes to hit your ride. And once it gets in your socks, it's really annoying. Now look at all these little pools of water and you can imagine how important these are to all the wildlife around here um, now in the winter time and also in the summer uh, when we get our monsoon rains uh, all these uh, little pools are filled with water Those. Those are like tiny little fireworks explosions all over the place. Look at that. Look at this. I don't know what kind of grass that is, but you can see how wild grasses like that were the source. And you can imagine those wild seeds um, were the original uh, plants that we harvested and domesticated into what we have today. There are so many stories to tell that you can find, especially this time of year in the winter, uh, that are often hidden in the greener times when there's leaves all about. Um, you know, obviously a small animal um, stopped there to get a drink of water in that pool um, and actually uh, pooped there, um, but you can see that that animal was also eating juniper berries and, uh, you know, but those are all things that you may or may not notice at other times of year. Once again, the same situation. A small animal stopped to drink at that little pool and uh, made some droppings and uh, left a clue that it was there. I mean, there's so much beauty in the colors, the subtle differences in the colors of the yellows and the browns. Look at that. And there are things that you don't typically notice. Now, a lot of these seeds uh, can be collected and used. Um, and that's uh, definitely uh, a video for another day.
even the rocks are interesting here with those concretions. So cool. That's big, big as a softball. I think our. <laughs> and once again, not to dwell on animal droppings, but that's just another picture. It shows you that this trail is heavily used by the elk and the deer. It's funny, I'd like to think that the deer and the elk pass right under that branch and duck their head just like I did <laughs> every time they come by. Uh, now, in places like this, it's so easy to get drawn into the bigger picture of the landscape. And because it is, really beautiful, but if you take the time to stop and slow down and start looking at the smaller things, just like Arlo's doing right there, um, see the beauty in all of these small little things. Look at this. I mean, look how absolutely beautiful all those plants are and so different than what they look like um, in the rest of the year. Look at these. Right there. Look at these. Arlo looks like he's about to get covered by a wave of grass coming out of these rocks. And they do <laughs> look like waves going over the rocks. But if you look at them closely, you can see all the little seeds. Look at that. Look at the colors of that rock. Almost like Indian petroglyphs, although they're not. It's the iron and other minerals in the rock that's coming out uh, with the erosion. Um, but that's so cool. Another thistle with explosion-like blossoms in this tree. Everything out here has a story to tell. You can see how it's bent probably a hundred years out here clinging to this rock and uh, making its, uh, its living here in the middle of this wash. And then, well, just like everything else, 
it's gone in a second in a forest fire. But you can see everywhere plants just clinging to the rocks. Uh, I mean, everywhere. The scraggly leaves of that little thistle plant perfectly mirrored by the scraggly branches of that dead ponderosa pine. I can almost feel the raindrops as they hit that probably millions and millions of times over the years. That. All those pits and crevices, one raindrop at a time. Wow. And just like that, our tiny little side wash, our little tiny side ravine opens wide up just like our imagination does when we stop not only to look at the big picture but the little picture just brushed against a creosote bush. That's that smell, that's a familiar smell of the rain. Uh, I love that. Mm, yeah. Today, I'm going to let Arlo choose the direction we're gonna go. Look at those spiral type leaves. Reminds me of an annularia, the uh, the plant from the kind of the coal age, the Mississippian, Pennsylvanian age of fossils um, that I'm so familiar with from back home in Illinois, where we would go fossil hunting, and we would find in these uh, nodules um, these beautiful. Uh, fossils and they're very reminiscent of this plant right here although it's nothing i'm sure like that in reality um, but just looking at it really reminds me of that Nature, when you stop and look, is way cooler than anything you could even imagine. Now I really think that Lauren Isley was really onto something 
when he said that to find the secret of life is to find it this time of year. And though he's been gone for a long time now, I return to that book over and over, and those thoughts are alive in me for sure. Uh, He speaks of the, the dry and desiccated seed pods and the frost and snow along the edge of the fields and uh, our meadows and uh, or rock walls. And I can't help but think and have the same thoughts. You can see that up there, but there's a small herd of elk on the side of the hill there. And Arlo saw him, he's kind of headed towards him. Arlo, stay here. Stay here, bud. They are obviously walking along the same path that we're walking right now. Come on, Arlo. Arlo, come on. Come down here. Don't chase them. Hmm. Is that some elk? Oh, that almost looks like a shell, but I don't think it is. Look at those tumbling clouds, once again, mirroring what's going on here on the ground with these swirls of grasses. Once again, the landscape has just opened up. Look at that. I'm sure at the top of that little hill there is a, a beautiful view and I'm contemplating heading up there. Uh, what the heck? Come on, Arlo. Let's go up here. Uh, I'd be surprised if there weren't Native American ruins up there. That would be the perfect spot to get a good view of the surrounding horizon.
another amazing view. <laughs> I think it's time that Arlo and I start heading back to the car. I kind of have a long ways to go back. That's a cool old juniper tree. Uh, looks like squirrels or something is building a little nest in here. That. That's definitely the kind of tree I'd like to build my house in. So Arlo and I are going to take the long walk uh, back to the truck and uh, enjoy this weather. I feel warm now that I've been hiking, uh, but it's definitely probably in the uh, mid to upper 40s. Uh, but as you can see, there's still some snow on the ground. back down in these juniper trees again. Berries right there. Mm. It tastes good. Just like that little bit of sweetness is like nature's little energy bar. Mm. They do have a hard seed in them though. Mm. But they do taste good. Definitely sweet. trees are just covered with juniper berries. Mm. So good. Look at that. All over. Mm. I previously collected a bunch of them, so I have a bunch at home, but um, it's always good to have some juniper berries in the kitchen because there's so many uses for them. Right now, you want one? You got some? Here. Mm. Arlo likes them too. Look at this. This little place might be a nice little cool place to hunker down. <laughs> that one's for you, Steve. Hope you're doing well. Yeah. <sighs> 
somebody's game cam. Obviously, do some hunting out here. There's so many elk. I see this to be a great place to do that. Arlo, this way. Come on, bro. So once again, another little micro story took place right here in this very spot. Some animal came to get a little drink out of this little pool. And uh, we stopped right here. I just happened to tie my shoe and I was able to see this. Uh, well, thank you so much for following our little micro story. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, if you like this video, please like, uh, please subscribe. Um, please leave a comment in the comment section. I always love that. Yes. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, bye-bye. be free. Load up the pans and fish and poles. Arlo and I, we hit the open road.